and me and my wife, we deal with it accordingly, you know, and, and we move on. Puff and Ja Rule runs out the room. Puff got his towel, Ja grabbing his towel, but they butt the naked. What kind of fuck shit is this? Getting cheated on by a partner is one thing, but when your husband for many years decides he wants to start getting with men, that's a whole new issue. And while it may sound like a movie plot, this was actually the case with Aisha Atkins, whose rapper husband decided he wanted to hop on the men train late into their marriage. The rapper in this case is Ja Rule. And like you probably thought, his interest in the other side was actually not the least bit natural, as it was revealed that he might have been turned by Diddy. And considering that Diddy's name has already come up in more than a few cases of industry veterans going the other way, there's probably some truth to this. But don't take it from me. Take it from Ja Rule's wife herself. We were standing in the presidential suite at the hotel. And this particular artist and Puff, they told me, don't let nobody come in the room. You know when they say the entertainment industry is the home of the good, the bad, and the ugly? Well, it seems the ugly part is Aisha Atkins's reality at the moment, as her marriage reportedly hit a roadblock after her husband got involved with rap legend Diddy. Now, Diddy is largely known in the industry as a notorious guy, not only because he's reportedly had his in some seemingly illegal dealings, but also because talks have been flying around for decades about his true sexual preferences. Well, it seems Aisha might have just dropped the answer on our laps with what she's revealed about him. And Puff just looked at the artist and the artist said, you ain't wanna come up in there. It was a lot of freaky shit going on. See, a while back, Word came out that Ja Rule was having some marital problems. And while everyone would agree that problems in marriages are normal, what Aisha reported that she was dealing with was miles from normal. According to her, the mesmerized rapper reportedly chose to leave her for someone else. Not a side piece he was with, not a girl he met at the club, but a man he met in prison. He wrote all them love songs and still don't know how to treat a biasterisk titch responded Aisha Atkins rapper Ja Rule's wife in an opening statement during her MTV exclusive, Married Life After Prison. We spent 10 plus years building our marriage, but it only took him two to decide he'd rather suck a D asterisk CK than be with his wife. Ja Rule was sentenced to two years in jail for a gun charge and released earlier in 2013 when he presumably returned to life with his family. But according to Aisha, that is simply not the case. He returned home all right to get his shit and leave. She claims that Jaw Rule real name Jeffrey Atkins simply told her that he was sleeping with his personal trainer, and not until later did she find out that not only was he a man, but his prison cellmate. But there's more to this story. About a decade ago, Jaw Rule was sentenced to jail. The Always On Time star served 24 months behind bars on attempted criminal possession of a weapon and failure to file taxes charges, and his wife never missed a Sunday visit. Promoting their reality TV series, Follow the rules on Access Hollywood Live, Aisha admitted it was tough not to have her husband around at first, but the weekly trips to prison soon became routine. She said, I literally went to visit him almost every weekend and drove there and back four and a half hours there and four and a half hours back every Sunday holidays. It was football games on Saturday and we'd go and visit dad on Sunday. That's what we did for two years. Calling his wife his rock in jaw rule, real name Jeffrey Atkins said, she held it down. When I went to the feds, federal prison, I just said, listen, I'm good. I don't need you to drive all the way out here. I'm right next to Canada. You don't need to come up here. But while she thought her husband was just being considerate about how much it would have cost her to physically make that journey every other week, it turns out her presence might have just been making the rapper's man uncomfortable. In the end, Aisha eventually agreed to stay away, leaving her man to finish his sentence away from her and his family. I did that whole four months, and I didn't see my wife or family at all. However, at that time, it seems the rapper had already been nurturing the person he planned to replace his family with. Seems a little hard to buy, but the truth is that Ja Rule didn't always swing to the other side. In fact, reports from a reliable source have revealed that the rapper was almost certainly influenced by Diddy. According to Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, it seems Diddy might have taken a whole bag of sex toys to Ja Rule's house at one point in the past, and that wasn't even the highlight of the story. And this story starts when I'm with Puff, 
and he's in uh, exotic bookstores and he's doing shopping. In an interview, Gene said he went with Diddy to a store where he saw Diddy getting butt plugs for himself and paying bucks on the counter not to get his stuff checked. He then said that he, Diddy, and another company went to North Carolina in a private jet where they stayed at a grand hotel and Diddy and the other guy went to the presidential suite together. So later that afternoon, this rapper and Diddy, they were all in the room together, Gene Deal explained. Next thing you know, somebody rang the doorbell. We were at the presidential suite. So I opened the door and the dude said, yo, I'm here for my cousin. The intruder claimed he was Ja Rule's cousin and he tried to get into the presidential room. Now Gene had been given clear instructions not to let anyone enter the room and so he told Ja Rule's cousin that he couldn't go into the room. Despite being warned, Gene claimed the gentleman outside the door then attempted to muscle his way into the hotel suite even after Gene informed him Ja Rule and Puffy were busy at the moment and wanted privacy. His arrogant behavior resulted in Gene grabbing the guy and slamming him hard into the piano. When I threw him into the piano, Puff and Ja Rule ran out of the room. Puff got his towel, Ja grabbing his towel, but they butt the foo asterisk asterisk naked. The commotion had caused the two gentlemen to leave their suite naked and holding onto their towels with a bewildered cousin looking at them. Gene Deal continued spilling the can of worms. And so then Ja Rule was like, yo, what's going on? Yo, Gene, that's my cousin. When Puffy asked Gene what had happened, the bodyguard explained that he had tried to get into the room that Gene was warning him not to. He said, he tried to get in the room. I told him he couldn't get in the room. And Puff looked at Jaw and Jaw said, yo, you ain't want to go in that room because it was a lot of freaky sh asterisk asterisk going on. Gene was super amused with the freaky stuff statement because it was hilarious to him seeing naked men in towels talk about doing freaky stuff together. I mean, I get how a story might have happened in a different way than what a deal may have seen. But the thing is that he isn't the first or only person to have seen Diddy in a strange situation like that, proving it to be a pattern for the music mogul. So you were a victim and then you became a victimizer. And that's what you chose. In a recent jaw-dropping video, Jaguar Wright has also spilled the tea on the music executive, vowing to reveal the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And boy, did she deliver. According to Wright, she's hired an entertainment lawyer who worked with Bad Boy around 2003, and this legal eagle has a doozy of a story to share. Wright alleges that Diddy has been using his power to force his subordinates to satisfy him. A yeah, Bad Boy, because she was one of the lead counsels for Bad Boy Entertainment. <clears throat> um, she witnessed something. She witnessed something that was disturbing to her. Apparently, Diddy had a meeting with the talented singer and actor Christopher Williams about a demo deal. But when the attorney went to Diddy's office to get approval for some paperwork, she was in for quite a shock. She allegedly walked in on Williams performing a sexual act on Puff himself. When she walked in, the door wasn't locked, so she didn't think twice about just walking in. And when she walked in, she saw uh, Christopher Williams performing fellatio on Puff. But here's the kicker. That surprising sight didn't seem to bother the lawyer at the time. However, the next day, Diddy brought it up and allegedly asked if she intended on telling anyone. The following day, he came into her office and was like, yeah, so you came in there, so what? What you gonna do, you wanna say something? And she was like, oh no, I... As if that wasn't already terrible enough, the rapper reportedly went on to threaten her, saying that he would ruin her life if she spilled the beans. You chased that woman out of your offices because she saw you being you, and then you threatened to ruin her life if she ever told anyone, but she did tell someone, she told me. Jaguar is adamant that Diddy has been using his power to force men into degrading acts just to prove how powerful he is. And let's just say she's not afraid to speak her mind. And if someone that used to work side by side with Diddy is saying things like this happened, then it's a no brainer that the rapper must have had something with Ja Rule and the fans seem to be aware. One person wrote, so apparently Diddy and Jaw Rule was effing back in the day, which isn't that surprising, but it's like damn Jaw Rule. Does this mean Diddy might have been involved with other men? I'll leave that for you to answer. That's it for this video, goodbye.